It is almost spring break. Yeah, 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 yeah but I'm for spring break. When I woke up, I realized, yo, I need a vacation. Y'all feel me? with the news, but lately, y'all, I just haven't had the chance. As if Lily Singh's show couldn't get any more unrelatable, the show being pre-recorded months in advance is really hurting them right now because she seems more unrelatable than ever. We're getting into all this and more in this week's Sunday special. So, hey guys, welcome back to the Spill Sesh Sunday special. Let's dive right on in. Let's first start off by talking about Dixie D'Amelio. If you guys know, she is Charlie's sister. And for the past couple of months since the girls got really famous, a lot of people have been wondering what Dixie's sexuality was. And I don't know why this has to be a question on people's minds. It's just ridiculous. Like, why are you entitled to know about this? Or it's just so invasive and just seems weird to me that people have gotten so absolutely invested in whether or not she is bi or not because people just assumed that she was. So after a long while of fueled rumors of her liking other girls and having girlfriends and all this stuff, all this drama that people made up for literally no reason, Dixie finally addressed the rumors. I can't believe she actually gave them the light of day, but she gave them what they wanted. She posted on TikTok and she said, had to clear up this sound since all of the videos from it were making wrong assumptions about me. So basically in this TikTok that she posted, that was the caption. And in the actual video, the lyrics of the song are, she likes boys and girls. And Dixie only mouthed the word boys. So she doesn't like girls, you guys. I just, I can't believe this is something that she had to address. And obviously she looks like annoyed. She's like rolling her eyes. So next we are talking about Thomas and Daisy, this hype house drama. We are talking about it once again. I know, I know, I know. If you guys don't, no, the Hype House got into some drama with their co-founders and Daisy Keach, who was a co-founder. A lot of drama went down, you guys. A lot of drama went down. If you aren't caught up to speed, I do have other videos explaining more in depth every single side of what has been going on. But a lot of people felt like this week, Thomas threatened Daisy. And I got a lot of messages about this because Thomas posted on TikTok and he instantly deleted the TikTok as soon as he posted it. But a lot of people felt like it was a threat to Daisy about talking badly about him. Basically in the TikTok, he's mouthing something that Nicki Minaj once said, and it's, if you don't like me, that's fine, but watch your mouth. Looks like he's frustrated and is just like laughing, like you better watch it. So a lot of people felt like that was coming at Daisy and I just don't know you guys. This Hype House stuff, I'm happy to say that it has been simmering down a little bit and the drama hasn't been continuing. Hopefully everything is smooth sailing from here on out, but who knows with these TikTokers, you guys, who knows? Next, we're talking about Trisha Paytas. We talked about her earlier on in this week, but Trisha just keeps coming back with something else. I mean, she posted another freaking reviewing the spicy chicken sandwich video. I can't even handle, this is the third time this week she's posted the chicken sandwich video. Like we 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 know that alters aren't gonna post three <laughs> three of the same video. I I can't with her. So I feel like Trisha is trying to find every single possible way that she can offend people right now. I mean quarantine is clearly getting to her. Anyways, Trisha came on Instagram and tried to say that she wasn't being offensive to anyone, and I was just kind of like, what? Trisha, are you are you for real right now? We all know you're trying to be offensive. So she posted on her Instagram story saying, I've been getting way more hate and judgment than usual, but I guess that's part of my troll past coming back to haunt me. L Trisha, you're currently a troll. Trolling isn't in her past, it's her present. Just know my heart's always in the right place. I never intend to offend or hurt anyone. What I speak is my truth and my truth alone. 
what I create content on is what I'm passionate about. I'm not the most PC and I am the worst at wording my thoughts, but I truly just want to create and help others like me feel like we aren't alone in this world with our thoughts and how we feel. You guys, I can't. I really, I cannot. Trisha is like the biggest troll of them all. Her goal in life is literally to offend every single human being she comes into contact with. I just, I cannot even take this seriously right now because she's been literally making dissociative DID's life a living nightmare and anybody that has DID she's been making fun of them so much I mean you don't post three review videos of the same thing acting like you've never tasted this before in your entire life just to try and say you have DID and you have three alters I it's like girl you do not have amnesia and forgot that you had this chick-fil-a sandwich two other times I mean, it's ridiculous, like just totally ridiculous. So I'm not taking any single part of this as any bit of truth. It's, she's all, this is her trolling. She's doing it on purpose. It's ridiculous. So anyways, we got to move on because I can't even handle Trisha right now. We're talking about Lily Singh. We talked about her about a month ago when I first started talking about her late night show and this is something that i have just been really keeping an eye out for i really wanted to watch the show and find what what went wrong because i really wanted this to be a success for lily this is such a big deal for a youtuber to branch off and be on tv especially being one of the first women to do late night television amongst the names of Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, I mean, James Gordon. It's all just white men really truly doing this. So the fact that Lily was doing this and that she was representing so many people on that screen, it was amazing. But it became very clear that she wasn't listening to any of the criticism that she was getting. She just felt like people were hating on her when I feel like the show, the reason why it's not, it doesn't feel like you're really connecting with her is because she's kind of doing an act. And this is when I realized it, when we went into quarantine and everybody's talking about the virus, everyone's talking about what's going on, they're being sympathetic. I basically realized that Lily has been overcompensating by trying to be extra with her personality to make up for the fact that everything she talks about on her show is totally irrelevant. So as I've been watching it, I've continued to think about the things that people have said. They don't like the way that she's joking about white people. They don't like that she is constantly reminding people that she is representing so many things as if that's supposed to automatically get her liked or appreciated celebrated if that is something that people need to constantly hear about like we can we already know that so let's move on let's tell a different joke or tell us something new I feel like when you're watching late night television shows, you want the person on the screen to be your friend. And every time you have coffee with your friend, you're not going to be like, remind them what you are, what you represent, and who you love. That's just not, <laughs> that's not what you're going to do. You're not going to talk about yourself. You're not going to be all stuck up and arrogant. Like, look at me, look at what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. I feel like when you talk about yourself too much like that, it turns people off. So that's what I felt like was originally the issue. And then over the past couple of weeks, I have really realized a big reason why I think Lily has to talk about things that are not about the present. Why she focuses so much about talking about herself. Why she tells so many stories about herself. Why she doesn't talk about anything current, anything that has to do with us, what's going on in our lives. Because if you take a look at other late night talk shows, you're watching James Gordon, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon. They are all talking about things that are happening right there that day in the now. It makes them seem relevant and like they get it and they're on our side and they are a friend. They're saying, hey, did you see what was on the news today? Can you believe that? That was ridiculous. And you're like, oh my gosh, I saw that. I can't even believe it. I, I, I mean, thank God Jimmy gets it. You know what I mean? As I've watched a bunch of people talk about Lily like Swell Entertainment, who has been to a few tapings, they tape a lot of these shows ahead of time. And I didn't know how ahead of time ahead of time was. We're talking months in advance. So the big problem right now 
is that Lily has been filming her show. She has all these episodes stockpiled. And right now we're in this pandemic, you guys. Everybody is talking about the virus. Everybody is talking about right now, doing their show from home. And when Lily Singh got on television and was telling April Fool's jokes, it's so sad that these episodes were filmed so far in advance and that NBC did her so dirty like this. I feel like if Lily's show was live, and I want you guys to understand something, all the late night shows like Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, James Gordon, they film their show just a few hours earlier than when it airs. So they'll film at like 4 p.m. and then the show will come on at like 9, 10, 11. Lily's show will film in January and it will air in April. That's so hard to make relatable. And I didn't realize the time gaps until now, until I was seeing how these pre-recorded time gaps are just putting her at such a big disadvantage compared to her competitors because nothing that she talks about in any of the episodes, not even right now or months ago when we didn't even know about the virus, nothing that she says on her show can be time sensitive. She can't make relevant jokes about that day and time and specific and it makes it so hard for her to be relatable. It's so hard. So I'm not blaming Lily for any of this. I know that she's just doing what she's told to do and the writers have to write this evergreen content for her. But I just think it's really sad that NBC didn't trust her to do live or live to tape or I just feel like this was such a big disadvantage for her. This is why she had to talk about herself so much in her jokes because she is something that isn't a place or a time or a news article or something that was really gonna be irrelevant in a couple of months. And the worst part is that I think this time right here, this time where everybody is stuck at home, this could have been Lily's time to shine because she's a YouTuber. She's used to making videos at home home in the comfort of her own home filming herself and being entertaining this would have been her time to shine on her show and she can't because her episodes are pre-recorded like if you guys thought it was cringy to watch her show before it's really cringy to watch now they did have to come on at least on her youtube page and say that all the rest of the shows for the rest of the time being have been filmed before so that's why all the jokes seem like they're missing the mark 10 times more than they already were. I feel like if Lily could come on the screen and talk about things that were happening today, I feel like her show could be a lot better. I feel like she would be a little bit more authentic. She wouldn't feel like she had to put on this act to be more entertaining because everything that she would be talking about would be relevant. It wouldn't be this dumb stuff that they had to grab because it's not time sensitive. Everybody is wondering when the show is going to get canceled, why it hasn't been canceled yet. And I'm just saying, let's give Lily a shot to be live. I feel like that would really change things up for real, for real, for real, for real. But who knows if that's gonna happen, if it's actually going to get renewed, then maybe they could give it a shot. But. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I really, really, really want to know what you guys think about this because yeah, these jokes are missing the mark. I know it's not her fault that, you know, she's telling these jokes because nobody could have predicted that this would be the way that it is right now, but it's just, it's hurting her more than it should right now. I would love a little late with Lily at home. I think it would really be beneficial for her to be doing these late night episodes during this time at home. These episodes are just so bad. She's talking about she wants a vacation and all this stuff is going on. I feel like they could have just not aired those episodes and they could have just had her do it from home. She's a vlogger, a YouTuber, come on. That's like her thing, making videos from home. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about this. I love you guys and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye guys.